Hello, family. Now we are becoming a big group. At the recording of this video, we have reached 480 subscribers. So thank you, thank you, thank you for each and everyone who has subscribed to my channel. I really, really appreciate. Uh, thank you for asking questions. Thank you for making comments, the compliments, and all the support and encouragement that I have gained from each and every one of you. Just know that I appreciate you and I remember you um, wherever I go. So now today is a happy moment. I'm rocking my new shades here because it's a happy moment that I'm going to talk about. I want to talk about after the green card interview. So this, if you're listening to this video, I know that you have been given the visa. <laughs> and that's a happy moment because we were so happy when we got the visa. I remember uh, when, when we were leaving uh, the, the, the offices, the immigrant offices, the U.S. Embassy, there was a guy who was selling coffee there. And then my husband is like, let me buy you guys some coffee. And then um, the security officer was the one who was telling us, guys, please go home because <laughs> it's a celebration, but just go and uh, celebrate at home. You don't want to celebrate here because <laughs> of uh, security and whatever issues. But we were overwhelmed. We were so happy. So I know when you're watching this video, you have gone for your interview and you have been granted your visa. Now, if you have not been granted your visa, they will tell you the reason as to, as to why. Maybe they will need uh, more documents to process. And if they are not going to give you uh, the visa for the reasons that I said on this video over here, then they will tell you that they are not going to give it to you. I say, like I say, they don't beat around the bush. They just tell you as it is. So um, very, very important um, to just know that if they are not going to give you the visa, they will tell you right away. So what do you do after they have given you the visa? <laughs> you are happy, of course. So uh, your passport will be stamped with the visa. And um, uh, when you get your, your visa, when you get your passport back and your visa, it's very important for you to look at it and review the information that is there. Make sure that the date of birth is correct. Make sure that your name is correct in the visa. Just look at the, those details, you know what I mean? And make sure that it's okay. It matches uh, uh, with what you have in, in your documentation, especially the name and the date of birth. Now, after that, uh, depending on the post office that you told them that um, they send your stuff, like us, um, I said uh, we used... Uh, the post office in Juja Road around uh, on the roundabout. Um, we said they send our documents through the DHL because that's what we had chosen. So when we went to get our passports, there was another envelope that was sealed. And that envelope, there was mine and there was for my husband. I can't remember if the kids' envelopes were there, but I remember mine and my husband clearly that there were two envelopes there. I think even there were for the kids. I can't remember. But I know that there is a sealed envelopes that they are going to give you. Now, those sealed envelopes, do not open them. And I repeat again, do not open the sealed envelopes that come with your visa. Uh, uh, with, with your visa. Please do not open them. Because those ones are the ones that you will carry when you are traveling to the U.S. And you will give them at the customs, at the border. Mm? So that they can read and then they will decide whether they will let you inside the U.S. or not. Now, um, please keep them in a safe place when you get them uh, so that uh, when it's time to travel, you can carry them and make sure that you do not forget them. You know, some of us are very, for very forgetful and sometimes you can just forget. So make sure that you don't forget that envelope and at the same time, make sure that you do not open it. So very, very, very important. Don't open that envelope uh, in, in whatever circumstances. Now, uh, so that's for the immigration people. And uh, immigration, uh, you know, immigration in, in any country, they, they are very serious because they want to make sure that they are uh, um, letting people who they know information about uh, in their country. Now, when will you travel? Now, when we, was, when we got our, when we were given the green card, actually, when we came from the embassy, I remember we started selling our stuff, excuse me. So uh, we sold our business, uh, my husband sold his car, and we had to sell our household items too because the money that uh, we needed was so much. I remember the plane ticket was going to close to 72,000 Kenya shillings for every individual, and uh, we needed 
four plane tickets. So we had to sell everything. Everything, I think what we gave is what we could not sell uh, because at that time we had spent a lot of money to process the visa. So we had uh, to sell everything. Now, if you have to sell what you have, please do. Because when you come on the other side in the US and um, you can always, uh, maybe if you want to replace, you can always replace depending on what you, what you wanna do um, when you come and live in the US. So please, please, please make sure that you look for all the resources that you can get uh, to raise the fare. <clears throat> now, look, it's very important to look at the expiry date for your visa, very, very important. Uh, because I had a question uh, from one of my viewers who was asking, that if she got the green card, she wanted to leave the daughter uh, back home and go for her after three years. Now, that is not possible because they will give you a limit. And most of the time, like ours had a limit of six months expiry date. So we had to be in the U.S. Um, before six months expired. So please look at the expiry date and make sure that any everybody who was given the visa is has come to the U.S. before that time expires. Very, very important unless uh, you had uh, some medical reasons that can make uh, the embassy to prolong uh, your visa, please make sure that you come to the U.S. within that speculated time because you don't want to uh, have problems because they have given you six months is a long time. And uh, even if you decide one person is going to come, and of course we say that if it's one person who is going to travel, we are going to tell the embassy so that they can know that it's the primarily applicant who is going to go and then the family is going to follow. So please uh, <clears throat> observe those details and make sure that you are following them because uh, we are still uh, following instructions on what they require us to do uh, before they uh, admit us um, to their country. Now, very, very, very important. I said six months, the diversity visa is six months. And like I said, please go to travel.state.gov and read more about this information that I am giving you so that uh, you can learn more and you can uh, verify. These are only tips that I am telling you that I did not have anybody to tell me when we got our green card. So I am trying to help someone out there. Now, there is a fee that you have to pay. I remember uh, after we got uh, the visa, we were supposed to go and pay a certain fee. Hmm? Now, a few, this, this one is after you get your visa. And before you travel to the U.S., uh, there's, some, there's a fee that you have to pay for the immigration. Now, this one we had no clue. I remember, and, and this, is, this, is, um, this is a caution, because I remember, um, and just not knowing, we went to this guy uh, in, in town, and uh, he was supposed, supposedly he, supposed to help us. So at that time, we did not understand uh, that we were supposed to pay with a credit card or a debit card. And most people I know, they don't know about that. I don't know. Um, I, I didn't understand what was a debit card and what was a credit card at that time. Because remember, in Kenya, you are given a card in the bank when you go and open an account, but they do not tell you whether it's a debit card or, a, or, it's, a, or it's a credit card, unless those people who are, who, who, who are so much learned. Like me, I... I I, I had my own business. I was training people in hair and beauty, but I did not know about a debit card and a credit card. So when we went to that guy, he said that um, he was going to use uh, his credit card to pay for us. And then uh, I think we were supposed to refund him money. But then my husband was like, um, no, um, I don't think we can do that because, you know, trust issues, you know, trust issues, because sometimes you will go and since someone sees that you do not know, uh, you might end up losing money. And I remember it, it was a it was it was it was a bunch of of money that we were supposed to pay. I can't remember how much, but we ended up not uh, paying uh, using that guy to pay for us. So what we did, we decided to go to the bank. We went to our bank and then when we went to our bank, uh, we talked to those people in the bank and we told them at what, what we were supposed to pay and then they helped us in the bank. Because when you go to your bank, you know that those people are not going to steal from you. And th at this juncture, you must pay that money before you get it into the US. So us, we, used, we, we paid uh, through the bank, which was okay because they were able to help us and we were able to make this tr transaction so uh, do not, um, I, would, I would not advise anybody to trust people out there 
because you do not want to be conned out of your money because of uh, you don't know or lack of information. So uh, our money we paid uh, in the bank is called the USCIS immigrant fee. So uh, very, very important. Make sure that you do not, we don't want you to lose money. We want you to go to the right inst institution so that you can pay your money. Don't pay to an individual because you don't know. They might be honest, and I'm not saying that that person was dishonest, but um, what I'm saying is that you never know who is honest and who is not honest, when it, especially when it comes to money. So very, very important. Go to a financial institution and you, they will be able to help you uh, to pay for the USCIS immigrant fee. Now, we have, uh, when we went for the medical, there were vaccination records. Remember, um, I told you uh, you have to take vaccination records for your kids and for yourself. And if you have any x-rays, like me, they had to do an x-ray. So make sure that you carry those ones in case they want to, the, the migrant people will ask you at the border. It's called the port of entry. So very, very important. Do not leave uh, your vaccination records and do not leave. If they did any x-ray, please make sure that um, you carry it. So don't pack it in your luggage because uh, when, you go to, when you go to the plane, normally uh, what goes with you uh, inside the plane is a small bag. It's called a carry-on. But the other luggage, um is um is put on the luggage area so if you put your your vaccinations and your x-ray uh, results on your luggage area you might not be able to access it very easily so it's very very important for you to carry them in, with, your, with your little bag the carry-on that you will go with uh, to the plane so that in case that they ask you for the for those records at the immigration you are able to give them so very 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 important so uh, let me, uh, when entering the United States. So when traveling, the primary or principal applicant must enter before. They, he, she must, he or she must enter before or at the same time as the family. So the primary, who is the primary applicant? The primary applicant is the person, the, the name of the person that won the green card. That person must enter the U.S. before or after. So that's what it stipulates. So make sure that uh, if you have to be split in whatever case, make sure that um, the first applicant is the one who enters the U.S. before the other people. And make sure that when you was the, the first applicant, because you will go and you will get a job very fast, and uh, maybe you will get a house, make sure that you call your family. It, it takes like, it, it, I, I believe in two months, you're able to ship your family or to, uh, to, play the, to pay the plane ticket and have your family uh, here in the U.S. Do not go to the U.S. and forget about them because if you do, there are records. You know, they know when someone enters their country and when someone leaves their country. They know because uh, they, they will stamp your visa when you are getting in and when you are uh, going out. So please do not forget your family. Yes, if you are the first applicant and you traveled, please remember uh, to, to, to uh, pay the airfare for your family because you'll be in a position to do it when you come to the U.S. and uh, have them so that you can uh, stay as a family and then uh, wait. Now, um, at the port of entry, they, um, they, 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 they have so many uh, samples, some books, uh, some leaflets that, that say, welcome to America. Uh, most people do not look at them, but sometimes if, if you, you are given that paper, just look at it and see, just have an overview of uh, what uh, is in store for you and they have so many resources they will tell you uh, where you can go so you can read uh, that information they normally have it uh, after you have been admitted to the u.s because still remember uh the paper the, the green paper even if you have been given the visa it is not a guarantee and they tell you it is not a guarantee that you will be admitted to the united states so very very important Another thing, uh, before you land, I remember uh, before we landed at uh, the U.S., when we were still on the plane, just maybe uh, 45 minutes or an hour to the plane, they gave us a paper. We were supposed to indicate uh, what we were carrying. So if you are carrying spices, write it that you are carrying spices. If you are carrying and then, then, then uh, anything, if you have uh, medicine, whatever, anything that you are carrying, just indicate that that paper has a place for you just to tick. You just uh, put a mark of what you are carrying. Make sure that you have um, put everything on that list so that uh, when you go to the customs, because they check your luggage, they know that that is there. So uh, make sure that uh, 
or whatever that you are carrying, um, just put it there. Now, another thing uh, that um, I observed on my own is that uh, when we came to the U.S., uh, we carried a lot of clothes. I remember us going to Gikomba to go and buy jackets, to go and buy trousers. But uh, honestly, like to be honest, don't carry a lot of clothes when you're coming here to the U.S. Because this place has a lot of clothes. So, and you know, all the clothes that I carried, I ended up even donating them because uh, I, I wasn't wearing them. So honestly, if you have clothes, do not carry. We had uh, we had seven bags, seven big luggages, and all of them were full of clothes. Actually, uh, what, what I had carried separate was just hair and um, a little bit of spices, but mostly what we carried was clothes. So you don't need all those clothes to come to the U.S. Because there, there, there are so many stores that you can go and buy clothes for cheap. So don't carry a lot of clothes. We had carried so many clothes. Everybody had their own bag and extra. And uh, we ended up not wearing those clothes. Um, some of them we ended up donating. So uh, please make sure that um, don't carry heavy, carry light. Unless you're bringing presents to people here in the U.S., just carry light. Um, the, when you come here, this is the land of plenty. This is the land of everything. Although uh, the land of everything, uh, when you come here, you have to work very, very, very hard um, for you to be able to achieve. Because we, al we also see people who have come here in the U.S. and they have disappointed us. And I'm going to talk about that uh, in one of my shows. They have disappointed us. They have failed us because they have uh, failed uh, to follow the instructions. They have just lived like people who have no direction and they have failed miserably. So this is a country of opportunity and it can also be a country of failure depending on an individual. So if you come here and you joke, I'm going to talk about, about why people come here and they fail miserably and they tell stories when they go back to Kenya is because they did not follow the rules. Because everywhere you have to follow the rules. Even, in, in, even, even here in my house, my kids have to follow the rules. They have to follow my rules. If they do not follow my rules, then... Um, it's not going to be good. So very, very important, um, very, very important information um, when you come uh, here to the U.S. So uh, that is uh, just an overview of uh, what happens after the interview. And once again, thank you for watching Charities Bubble. I always appreciate you. I always appreciate your comments. And uh, please leave all your questions on the comment section. I'm going to go through them. I'm going to try to answer uh, through... Um, to, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to answer them uh, on YouTube and at the same time I normally have live sessions where um, I, add, uh, I answer your questions uh, to the most of my knowledge and what I do not know there is that website read, read, read and you will get all the information so once again thank you thank you, thank you, thank you and please subscribe to my channel like us uh, thank you very much and God bless you